Recently, I've been getting back into the Fallout series, playing a lot of New Vegas specifically, but I did reinstall Fallout 4 again for the first time in almost two years, deciding to try it out again to see if I still enjoyed it. Massive air quotes around the word enjoyed, as even though the gameplay is fairly simple and the story is about as in-depth as a one inch are going balls deep, I still had a fun time striking out on my own and exploring the Commonwealth. But I decided to see what other people had to say about the modern series at large. H Bomber Guy has some great videos on Fallout 3 in New Vegas, Salt Factory does in-depth gameplay coverage through Fallout 3, New Vegas and 4, exploring side quests, factions and DLC. And most recently, I just watched 10 hours of Kratos' dissecting of why Fallout 3 and 4 aren't that great and arguing points made by many a true nerd. If you're into that kind of thing or want to see some great critical videos on the modern Fallout series, then I would highly recommend giving them a watch. Links in the video description below. Through watching these videos, I got to think, as I am one to do, about what a potential Fallout 5, or 6 depending on if you count Fallout 76 as 5 or not, could look like. Now, a few disclaimers before I start. First off, I haven't played Fallout 2, only Fallout 1, 3, New Vegas and 4. Also, I haven't gone through all of the DLCs for these games, I haven't touched Fallout 3's DLCs, I'm currently working through the New Vegas DLCs, and I've only finished the Far Harbor expansion for Fallout 4. So I apologise in advance if something I say has already been done or implemented into Fallout 2 or the DLCs I haven't played, as well as the fact that some of these ideas aren't entirely unique, and through watching the videos I mentioned before has helped to inform some of the ideas in in general. Secondly, and this is more of an apology, I'm just going to be showing some basic New Vegas gameplay in the background which doesn't have anything to do with what I'm talking about. This is because I'm currently working through a few things to make up for the projects I lost when my PC died last month and I don't have the time to go through multiple games to gather specific footage. Lastly, this video will only really apply to the type of player who actually role plays their characters or cares about how in depth you can go with character building and stat progression. So the casual fan likely wouldn't give a toss about any of that, so there's that warning I guess. So again, I'm sorry about all of that, and this has taken long enough, so let's just start throwing stuff at the wall and see what sticks. Let's start with the setting. Originally, I put Florida or Miami before realising Miami is in Florida, so that's one problem cut in half. But even better than that, just before I started recording this, I actually found that someone is actually working on a Fallout Miami mod, so that's one idea done and dusted. Great start but not great for the point I'm trying to make in the video at large. But I'm going to get into a little bit more detail as why I think Miami is a great pick. Miami is one of those places, from what television and movies have shown me, has a diverse ecosystem of habitats. It has swamps and marshes where mutated alligators could be a common sight and threat. There are more rural areas like the boonies, a word I learned from CSI Miami, a sort of middle ground between the suburbs and the bayous and could be home to one of the game's many new factions. The city itself is surrounded by its suburbs, the central area has towering skyscrapers and a maze-like downtown area with vast streets and many, many, many alleyways and back streets that would be great for stalking. Then obviously there's the beach probably one of the most iconic parts of Miami. Now, obviously Fallout is set in an alternative universe, blah blah blah, so specific landmarks and institutions may not be there. Hell, Venice Beach as you know it might be wholly unrecognisable even before the nukes would have dropped. It's a great setting with a lot of natural transitions between its settings and would be a great way to shift the series over with a fresher feel without setting the story inland again in a grey or orange tinted wasteland. And as a side note, even I know this would be a very unpopular option because Murica, but a game set outside of the US would be cool. Let's see how the rest of the world is faring in the Fallout universe. See what companies have filled the role of vault tech in somewhere like France, Germany, Australia, Asia, and dare I say, the UK. But not Russia, we already have the Metro series kind of covering that. Now I mentioned that the boonies could be a location for a new faction, and the key words in that sentence is new faction. Please don't bring the Brotherhood of Steel back. It's not that I don't like them, and I get they're usually on the cover and power armour is kind of like the iconic figure of the game, but there's literally no reason to shoehorn them in yet another plot, because of how bad Bethesda's writing actually is, there's only so many excuses and retcons Todd can flounder his way through before people get sick of the Brotherhood. And it's the same with the super mutants, but I'm not here to harp on modern Fallout's lore, 
as a lot of it is covered in way more detail than I could ever hope to achieve in the videos I've mentioned earlier. But let's introduce new factions, something like a local community of tough and rugged country folk who have survived thanks to their outback and woodman lifestyle. Maybe in the suburbs we could have a town made up of surviving middle class people who instead of going into the vaults just had normal bomb shelters, and when they tried to rebuild their old lifestyles as much as possible, they became snooty and a stuck up bunch of elitists because they survived and had free reign over their local area before anyone else, making a gated community of pompous shutouts. We could even have Miami's version of a militia or a militant group setting up a shop in some of the more industrial areas, using warehouses and factories as barracks and training camps, guarding local workers who are making materials to help rebuild Miami. They could be going against a rebel guerrilla faction who has buried themselves deep into the heart of the city, rigging streets and alleyways with traps and ambushes trying to keep the militia out so they can hoard all of the goodies the city has to offer, as well as the strategic advantages it affords. There's so many ways you could introduce a new group and implement them in the world without having to fall back on the series staples, forcing something recognisable in out of fear of alienating long term fans. In fact, I think the hardcore long term fans, and even some of the newer fans, would really appreciate this more than Bethesda realises. One of the issues Kratosis mentions about Fallout 4, which I didn't think about until he mentioned it, but in retrospect I completely agree with, is the fact that even though you can change your name in Fallout 4, Bethesda's already named the protagonist and given them a backstory. You are either Nate, the soldier, or Nora, the law student. So no matter what you want your backstory to be, if you want to be a sneak thief or a bloodthirsty raider, you are then Nate, the soldier turned thief, or Nora, the ex-law student turned bandit. I do have an idea on how things can be different. I get this won't be a popular opinion, I get that, but bear with me because I do have a kind of coverall for this. Maybe there could be something like a D&D style background system where you can choose a preset origin which would allow for certain stats and skills to be prioritised and allowing for proficiency in those areas, like a medical background or a military background. An example of this could be say, your background was you were raised in a vault where everyone there is descended from a scientific group and through being raised in that environment your character is more intelligent. This allows for a better understanding of things like robotics and computers, so you'd get a damage bonus against robots, you're more adept at using energy weapons over ballistics, hacking terminals is easier for you, and if you don't want to pick a preset background, you don't have to. You can make your own character backstory, much like the traditional special system in prior Fallout games. You can pick and choose to allocate a set amount of points into specific skills and pick traits you would prefer, making a truly unique character. On the topic of skill point allocation, this obviously means that I think we should return to the Fallout 3 slash New Vegas approach where upon levelling you are giving a specific amount of points to spread across the board, and every second or third level you get to pick a perk. But instead of just arbitrarily putting points into something like guns or speech with no physical effect until you hit a threshold like 25, 50 and 75, maybe we could show how each point shows something like a percentile increase. Like each point going into guns reduces things like weapon sway, hip fire accuracy and damage at ranges in a small way. And then when you do reach a threshold, 25 for example, where your character has shown proficiency in using weapons, now you have a new set of reload animations like in Killing Floor 2, which shows your familiarity with the weapons and has a snazzy new animation that highlights this and provides a reduction in reload speed. Maybe you could make it so instead of just being given one without a choice, maybe these thresholds allow you to pick specialty perks but ultimately you would have to sacrifice one of the four options, so you have to plan out in advance what perks you would want to take based on how you want to play your character. Each skill could have plenty of examples, but I don't want to bog this down, which is why I only gave one example, but let me know in the comments what other specialty perks you think the other skills could have. Now, why did I call them specialised perks? That's because I think instead of your character gradually becoming an absolute beast and a jack of all trades, what if you had the option to have your character specialise in one or two specific skill sets? Now this may sound redundant after what I just said about skill points, but maybe there's a smaller level cap so you can't max out all your stats over time, or even get close to it. If you want to be a jack of all trades and spread your points evenly, you can for sure. But say you want your character to be a charismatic merchant type, so you'd focus on the speech and barter skills. This could eventually lead to you opening up your own caravans, allowing for passive income. 
training with local settlements and haggling better prices as usual. Maybe you want to be a guerrilla fighter and prefer setting up ambushes rather than fight directly. You could then focus on something like explosives and survival. Explosives to craft bigger and more devastating bombs and traps, while survival could be used to hide the bomb effectively in its environment, or use it to track a target so you can figure out their route so you can go on ahead and set up an ambush. I think this, while a little ambitious, would allow for a lot of creativity and utility to fit all playstyles without each one feeling samey once you hit the higher levels. Now I'm not gonna lie, I wasn't 100% sure on how to handle the story section of this video, mostly because it's Bethesda, so what would be the point? But I think the key things Bethesda needs to look at and change is how dialogue is handled. Everyone knows how much of a joke Fallout 4's dialogue options are, seeing as that they all basically yield the same results regardless of what options you pick in the dialogue tree. This was probably because Bethesda used a voice protagonist in this game, meaning that they would have had to record a lot more. And because that costs money, Bethesda just wanted to do the bare minimum and hope people wouldn't notice. But it would be nice to have skills affect conversation again, branching paths where saying the wrong thing could end badly for the player through their own fault. You know, like, Fallout 3 and New Vegas did. Also, let's bring back the reputation system again. I liked in New Vegas that your actions had consequences in certain scenarios, meaning you could lose standing with like the NCR or the Boomers or the Powder Gangers. But let's go deeper. Maybe doing specific quests for one faction, even if you don't kill or harm a single person, would piss off another faction. Plot twist, exact same mission, no one's harmed or killed, but you were never spotted. That faction would then never know it was you, and you can preserve reputation with them. Even if you killed people on that quest, as long as no one saw you and can identify you, then your rep is safe and you can bluff the other faction, like a spy or a splinter cell agent. This would obviously need some kind of balancing so it doesn't break the game with everyone, just like Skyrim's stealth archers. The final point I'd like to make would be one a lot of people have seemingly been bringing up since Fallout 3. Modern titles excluding 76 have been set roughly 200-ish years after the bombs have dropped. I'm aware Fallout 2 has some semblance of humanity actually reforming in an actual logical way, but Bethesda doesn't seem to realise that people aren't just going to live in shanty towns made of scrap metal and bubblegum. People aren't going to live in settlements and houses without removing the rubble and the skeletons at some point. That's why there's mods for clearing out settlements entirely, removing all rubble, debris and corpses. Because that's what we would realistically do. Sure, the world might go back to a Wild West kill or be killed mentality, but it will still make an effort to live as comfortable and as sanitary as possible. Just because the bombs dropped doesn't mean we regressed back into ape men banging rocks against bigger rocks. Even if they aren't fully rebuilt, we could have a setting where the Florida wastes have new buildings, actually refurbished home, better agriculture and economics. The modern lifestyle got hit with a nuclear reset, but the modern mentality and ingenuity didn't. And final, final point, but... I think we should move away from caps. The use of caps in the original Fallout games was because they were a localised currency which had value in them being used to reseal purified water bottles. There was literally zero reason for anywhere else in the states to adopt caps as a currency. Boston had no way of knowing California was using caps, and even if they did, they probably would have had an entirely unique currency at that point. From what I researched about caps in Fallout 2, they had basically been devalued so much by the NCR mining and minting gold that cap circulation as a currency all but ended. So besides Bethesda once again adding something in just because it's recognisable, there's no reason for legal tender in one area of the waste to have any value anywhere else. Seeing as purified water in Fallout 3, New Vegas and 4 all come in plastic bottles, meaning there's no need for metal caps. A new currency that makes sense would make the world more believable, and help the setting, regardless of where it is in the world, be truly unique unto itself. But it really feels like uniqueness and effort is something Bethesda is scared of, so as much as I go on about how great I think all of this stuff would be, regardless of how you as an individual would feel, at the end of the day, it's Bethesda making the next entry in the series, so literally nothing I say here will ever happen, and I've just technically wasted your time and my time. But that's on Bethesda. Thanks, Todd.